are the challenges of being a pilot? The challenges of being a pilot, I would say, is continuous uh, learning. You have to learn all the time. Safety. And um, those are the most important. Learning and safety. Right. What do you mean by learning and safety? Uh, <coughs> learning, we have to learn. There's always some evolution in, in the technologies, so you have to be on top of the new technologies and you have to learn them. Right. And safety, uh, as you get more proficient as a pilot, you become, sometimes there's a tendency to become less safe because you become more confident oh, in yourself. So one of the challenges is to step back and say, I am not so safe yet, I have to be more safe. I see. Okay. okay. Uh, have you ever gotten sick during any flight you did? No. Never Thank God, that? no. Okay. I had a passenger who became sick, but not myself. But was it serious? No, just uh, motion sickness, normal motion sickness. I see. Uh, until what age do you plan to keep flying? I plan to keep flying as, as, as old as I can, I think it's 65, was the, right. yeah. so as old as I can, I would like to keep flying. Okay. Uh, would you encourage your son or daughter to become a pilot? Yes, I would, but I have tried and they don't want to. But, uh, Why not? <laughs> they, I don't think they, they like the idea of having all the parameters to, to check everything. It's, it's, also, it's, it's nice to be a pilot, but it's also a serious thing to do. You have to be willing to... It's my fault. Okay. You have to be willing to check. Uh, <coughs> and you can't just go out and fly, I'm going to fly. You have to uh, check things. And so, But so far, if they're interested, I would encourage them. Alright. Which is the most beautiful airport you've been to? The most beautiful airport I have been to is San Martin. In the Caribbean, Why do you summer, think so? because uh, you come in through from the sea, and the runway is almost at the beach, uh, and it's surrounded by beautiful beaches. Let's see. Uh, tell me about your first solo flight. <coughs> my first solo flight was here in Junjiai, mm. uh, so by coincidence we are here. And it, it was, I was a little bit nervous but prepared because I had already done, I think, 40 or 50 hours. So I was prepared for it. And, and which uh, aircraft was it? It was a Skyhawk 172, Cessna 172. How did you feel? Uh, I felt very good after, after I landed, I felt very good. Okay. It was good. Why did you decide to be a pilot? Always, I always had this dream. Uh, and I never had the time to do it. I only became a pilot three years ago. Okay. So, and uh, now that I have a little bit more time, I decided to become a pilot. I see. Okay, so now we're moving to the second part of the test. Okay. okay. In the start, you'll listen to a speech from the recorder involving two different situations. Mm -hmm. When it finishes, I want you to report what you understood. Okay. okay? Remember that you can listen to each extract twice. Okay. Okay? Can we go to the first one? Yes, we can. So you can adjust your headset. Oh. <coughs> Let's go. Hmm? Do I need the microphone? No, I don't. What did you understand here? I understand that this is uh, a flight from Paris to Madrid, that the plane has been loaded but the cargo is not fully loaded and passengers are complaining about the delay. Okay, suppose you are the captain, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask coordination why cargo loading is so late and tell them that you have to take off in 10 minutes. You want me to ask? Okay. Yes. Uh, coordination, this is the captain of AZ, I don't know, 765, uh, my passengers are complaining and you're taking too long to load the cargo, can you give me a reason why uh, you're taking so long, we have to leave as soon as possible. Okay, so listen to the response from coordination. Uh, 
she said that uh, they're waiting for for baggage from connecting flights and ask if uh, if uh, we have to take off in 12 minutes. Did you say 12 minutes? No. Can you clarify the situation? Okay. Uh, no, I didn't say 12 minutes. Uh, I said that uh, we have passengers complaining, so we, we must do it as soon as possible. Okay. Now we're moving to a different situation, okay? okay? Uh, passenger had a heart attack uh, in this Air France flight and they're asking for a diversion to the nearest airport. Okay, now tell the controller you need man call assistance. Uh, <coughs> let's receive your control, this is Air France uh, 289. Uh, we need medical assistance urgently. One of our passengers has passed out apparently he has had a heart attack. Okay, so listen to the controller. Medical assistance, not police assistance. Right. And now listen to the flight attendant's call. He's saying that the passenger is lying on the floor sweating and getting pale and asking for instructions. Can you give him instructions? I'm not a doctor, but... No, that's okay, just... Uh, just keep him as comfortable as possible until we land at the nearest airport. Or see if there's another doctor on board, maybe. Okay. Now we're moving to the third part of the test, okay? okay. In this part, you will listen to two different conversations. Mm -hmm. And then I'll ask you some questions related to that. Okay? okay. Can we go to the first one? Yes, we can. What did you understand here? The, the pilot is having difficulties because of a mechanical failure and he is re requesting uh, vectors for uh, coming back to the airport okay. and assistance on the ground once he's there. What could the causes of his symmetry be? It's a mechanical failure, prob probably hydraulic. Uh, there's one in each wing, there's one slat and one is going down more than the other. Great. And what are the procedures you should follow if you have this problem? Well, I'm not sure because I'm not, I don't know this plane, but uh, I would expect that you try to uh, lower in, in the flaps and then uh, if, if, if with the flaps lower nothing happens, try to uh, release them again and then come back to the airport as they are doing, as for an emergency return. Is it a serious situation? Uh, it appears to be a serious situation because he says he's not being able to fly straight, so that's serious. Okay. okay. So I'll play the second one. Okay. The, the airplane had an engine failure, uh, he communicated to the tower, Madrid tower or Madrid control and they, she asked them to climb to 050 and maintain the runway heading. Okay. Have you ever had a problem with an engine? No. no? I only fly a single engine plane. If I have a problem with, <laughs> with the engine, I'm in deep trouble. Yeah. Uh, you don't need the headset anymore, okay? okay? Uh, what problems does a pilot have when using pen, 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 and maybe, maybe, can you give me examples? A, a pen, pen, pen requires uh, attention, uh, and maybe is, uh, is, we're coming down, or there's going to be a crash. Uh -huh. uh, so a pen, pen is 
for immediate attention and uh, May Day is for an emergency. I see. Okay. Now, considering both situations from part 3, do you remember the first one? The first one was the flight that was late mm -hmm. because of the baggage loading? No. In part 3. Part 3 was the emergencies. Yes. Uh -huh. Can you remember the first one? Okay, the first one was the slap the symmetry. That's it, okay. and the last one? Okay, it was this one that we just heard. Okay, so how would you compare them both? Um, I think they are similar because both are serious problems. Uh, maybe the first one is more serious because uh, without one engine the airplane can fly, but not being able to fly straight is more serious, I think. Right. In your opinion, what's the worst emergency a pilot can have? Worst emergency? Uh, well, for myself, as an engine failure because I fly single, single engine planes. Right. For, for a multi-engine plane, <coughs> I think the worst emergency is um, having some sort of structural failure in the aircraft where, where the fuselage breaks there's a break in the fuselage. I think that's maybe the worst emergency. Why? Can you tell me? Because that, that usually leads to a sequence of, of emergencies. We just saw on the Air France flight recently, uh, where one one emergency leads to another. So I think that's one of the possibilities: a breakage in a fuselage. Okay. Fine. So now we're moving to the last part of the test, okay? okay? okay. I want you to describe this picture to me, mm -hmm. and then I'll ask you some questions about it. Okay. Well, it's an airplane with uh, two engines. I guess it's a 767, and one, the left engine is... <coughs> come, the smoke, are, smoke is coming out from the left engine. Right. What would standard procedures be for this situation? Are there any memory items? Memory items? I don't know the explain, but it would probably mean shutting down the left engine. I think that would be the first standard procedure. Uh, then climbing to a specific height, because this is right after takeoff. You can see the landing gear is still being retracted. Right. And after, the, after flying the plane to communicate with the tower and Tell them you have an emergency. Right. Have you ever been through this situation? No. Never? Never. How do you think you would react? Yeah, I think if I was trained for it, I would react accordingly. I see. If you're trained for something, you should be able to react accordingly. Uh, do you think it would be more critical if it were in another type of aircraft? Well, <coughs> if it would be in a single engine aircraft, it would be more critical because there's not much to do unless you know, what just could land. Be done in this well, situation? what we do in single engine aircraft is uh, if you have an engine failure after takeoff, you land straight away if you have a runway to land. And if you don't have a runway to land, you look for the best possible landing field. In my case, I fly a serious aircraft which has a parachute, so I would use the parachute. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it easier. All right. All right. Anything yeah. else, Sergio? No, I think that's fine. So this is the end of our test, okay? Okay. Thank you for coming.